All right, so if you got an IRS notice a CP2000, a proposed amount due, and you're freaking out, not sure how to respond to this, and the issue on the notice is the fact that you missed some stocks that were sold, maybe RSUs, ESPPs. That's exactly what I'm going to go through on this video. First, I'm going to go over the notice that the taxpayer got, a response to the notice, and then the IRS response back. If this sounds a little overwhelming to you and you want a guy like me to help you out with your particular case, feel free to reach out to us either through our website. You can schedule a consultation with a link in the description or that pinned comment or give us a call uh, at our number here. You'll see that in the description. Now, this case in particular was probably one of the quickest that I've seen actually go through. It took about a month for us to get a response back, believe it or not. Usually we see maybe somewhere around like three to six months though. Bottom line is if you got a CP2000 and it has to do with stock sales of RSUs or ESPPs and it's got a big amount on that notice, don't worry. I'm going to let you know how to respond to get that bill lowered significantly. All right, so here's a copy of the actual notice that the taxpayer got. You'll see we got this, wow, September 11th of 23 last year here. Um, CP 2000, 2021, big bill, right? That's gotta be so scary to get in the mail. IRS saying you owe almost $18,000. If we scroll down, what is it? The third page here, it'll tell a fourth, second page, sorry. It's gonna tell us exactly what happened, right? Explanation of changes. And essentially it's all securities. And you'll see, right? It's saying that nothing was shown on their turn, i.e. there is no basis for this. And so they are saying that the whole proceeds of the sale of the stock is income, which is incorrect. It should be the difference between your basis or usually it's your purchase price and the sales price, right? It's the capital gain on this thing. Um, so that's essentially what's happening. You'll see, right? Lots of sales here. Uh, some of which, right, do have basis, but most don't. So they are reporting this 56,000 of income. All right, so how did we respond? Here it is. Here's our response form, okay? We first and foremost make sure we check that box right there saying we do not agree with what you did, okay? I filled this out for the taxpayer saying that I'm authorized to speak on their behalf, essentially, and then I wrote a lovely statement here, okay? We essentially stated that we don't agree with your calculations. We have basis. Not only do we have basis in this, we have proof of the basis, better yet, right? That's exactly what this statement shows. So if you have a similar situation and you need kind of a template on how to respond, here you go. I'd say hit the pause button, type all this stuff out, okay? And so here's what we did, right? We took that 1099 that Morgan Stanley or E-Trade actually issued, and better yet, we got this stock plan sub, uh, transaction supplemental from E-Trade showing these basis. So let's take a look at this. And then from there, then I filled out the tax forms that we should have originally filed with is essentially what this is saying, the Schedule D and the Form 8949. So let's check it out. All right, so here's the 1099 that E-Trade and Morgan Stanley sent out, okay? And you'll see, right, here's that 56 that reconciles with what was on that CP2000 from earlier. Better yet though, right? Basis not reported. You'll see this big fat zero right here on this, right? Cost basis column for that 54,000. And that's what we are contesting here, right? We have basis in this 54,000 right here. And where do we find this? In this particular case, you'll see in that supplemental statement here. Here it is. This is the supplemental statement from E-Trade, right? From a whole bunch of different RSUs, ESPPs, we have those adjusted cost basis. And this is the basis that we use to do our response. Obviously, some of them already have basis. And we saw that, right? But it actually doesn't even have the total adjusted basis. Why? Because a lot of this was already reported in your W-2 is what this is saying, okay? So we go through this and report it as such on the 8949 and the Schedule D. So we should essentially report 27,000, not that original, I think it was 54, 56,000 is what it was, okay? So 2,700, not 56,000 is what we're reporting. Let's check that out. 
If this sounds a little overwhelming to you and you want a guy like me to help you out with your particular case, feel free to reach out to us either through our website. You can schedule a consultation with a link in the description or that pinned comment or give us a call uh, at our number here. You'll see that in the description. One thing I do want to point out when filing the 8949 in Schedule D, you'll see how these are reported to the IRS. Now, we want to keep it as such. So you'll see these separately listed, right? You'll see the 3600 that we see here and then the 54000 listed here as two separate line items on the 8949, essentially just because that's the way the IRS wants this thing reported. So here it is on the 8949, right? The 54,000. We have the basis of the 52, the 2700. There it is for that one in particular. And then the other one, right? The 36,000 that we talked about here, right? And the 202. So those two combined, we'll see on the Schedule D, is the 2900. And we should be taxed on the 2900, not the 56,000. And that's essentially what we are saying here in our response, okay? So I sent all that over to the IRS. We waited about a month. I could not believe it. And we got the results back from the IRS with a nice letter that looked like this. This is what we got, right? So it went from $17,700 to $700 with our response. So it was about as what the, the original notice had here, $17,000, right? Went all the way down to $700. And obviously, we agreed to this, it looked good, and sent that back, essentially. All right, well, I hope the video was helpful for you. If it was, do all the normal stuff, like, share, subscribe, yada, yada. And if you want some help with your case and you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, feel free to reach out to us. Either give us a call or go to our email. You'll find that in the details or on the homepage. Uh, thank you so much, guys.